<laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Alex. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Check Out Some iOS Games. We've got Endless Road. Now this particular game is an endless runner. It does seem to be the season for them. This one tasks you with getting away from certain destruction. So you do have an endless road in front of you. Your goal is to try to get as far as you can ahead of the collapsing city that is left in your wake. Now the thing that sets this game apart, other than its beautiful art style, is the fact that you need to maintain a certain speed. The world itself is traveling at 80 miles per hour. Your job is to maintain at least that speed. As you speed up, your car changes color. As you get faster, you progressively turn more and more pink. As you slow down, your car turns yellow and then green. You need to maintain a minimum speed of 80 miles per hour in order to outrun the collapsing city. This is actually easier said than done because of all the obstacles in your way. So when your car is pink, you're doing quite well and you can stay ahead of the curve. The only disadvantage to that is you get too far ahead and you can't see what's coming. So you need to find a good balance between falling behind and getting caught up with the collapsing city and getting too far ahead. The art style looks amazing. It's very clean, crisp, and the animation is nice and smooth. Uh, the controls are very simple. It's just tap left and tap right to change lanes. You collect as many coins as you can and uh, obviously avoid the, the obstacles. When you do collect a random power-up, uh, it will appear in the center bottom of the screen and uh, tapping that activates it. There is a map screen that actually tells you where your previous journey took you. The levels progress randomly, so you don't actually have a choice in which one is chosen. However, discovering new paths unlocks certain bonuses in the form of missions. Those missions are set out in a jetpack joyride style, so after you complete one, it is removed from your mission screen and another one is put in its place. These can vary from collecting a certain number of coins, to hitting police cars, to crashing at certain points on purpose, and reaching certain stages without taking damage. You've got power-ups which are randomly given to you when you run over a question mark on the road. There's four to choose from, jump, bomb, slow motion, and nitro. Each one has a very specific function, some more useful than others. Jump lets you jump, obviously, and clear certain obstacles in your path. Bomb pushes all other cars and trucks and police cars out of your way. Slow motion slows down the action so you can more easily navigate the obstacles, and nitro speeds you up drastically. Then you have utilities. Now utilities are one-off use boosts. There's one skip your first 700 meters, kind of like a turbocharger, it just advances you to a certain point. Uh, there's an extra power up at 2500 meters. Uh, power ups are the question marks that you run across, so that will give you one when you reach 2500. Uh, decreases damage when you collide with a vehicle. It doesn't slow you down as much. And quick revive after death. Each one of those costs quite a large amount of coins to use, and their consumable nature leads me to believe that the developers are trying to push you towards spending more coin than you might have. So there's other vehicles to choose from as well. Uh, as you can see, I'm in the classic car. The very next car is 7,000 coins. Now I've been playing for about 90 minutes, and I've only been able to amass 900 coins. I have unlocked some power-ups before that, but I do think the cars are a little bit too expensive at the moment. There's unlock, so you can unlock all the locations on the maps, so you don't have to discover them as you progress. And there's different colors. That will actually change the background purely on an aesthetic level. The game itself is actually quite difficult. I did manage to make it up to a highway before, which was five lanes, absolutely swamped with cars. The difficulty increased so much that I didn't last much further than that. I fear that without a new car, I probably wouldn't be able to make it much further than what I have at the moment, which is about 4.5 kilometers. And it is very unforgiving as well. Sometimes I'll find myself running into cars that simply block my path. The difficulty curve is set far too high for a new player. I'm already finding myself losing interest because I'm not progressing very far at all. <laughs> the 
Facebook Connect allows you to post your high scores to Facebook and find your friends on there as well. It doesn't automatically post to your walls, so it won't annoy your friends without your permission. There is leaderboards via Game Center as well as achievements. The presentation is excellent, the graphics are outstanding, the sound is crisp, although a little bit repetitious. Even though the game is very nice to look at, the gameplay itself kind of lets me down. It is far too difficult, even for a randomly generated game. The monetary system is kind of on the unfair side. It seems to be more of a grind fest than a fun fest, and unfortunately that's where I have to get off this ride. Not bad, but certainly not one of the better endless runners I've played recently. Thank you for joining me folks, this has been Endless Road, my name is Alex, and I will see you again for another episode of Let's Check Out Some iOS Games. Bye bye.